Hello and welcome to another video of Soul Computer Science. Today I'll show you how to reverse a string in C. There are several solutions for these problems and we'll see a couple of main ideas. In C, strings are represented with char arrays, so we can use indexing to address each element. Let's say that we have this string, which is 14 characters long, and we'll save our reverse string in this new array. The simplest thing to do would be to move at the end of the first array, one character before the terminating one, and start copying all the characters in the new array by going backwards. To do this we need two indices, i and j. i is used in the original array and will move backwards, while j will move forwards in the second array. So this is the first step, and we need to copy the character at position 12, which is i, in the new array, at position 0, which is pointed by j. After the second iteration will be with the character h in position 1 of the destination array, i will be at index 11 and j will be at index 1, because we moved the two indices. If we go forwards, we'll have a white space characters and we'll copy it in the new string. Remember that all these slots are undefined at the moment. We need to proceed until we get to the first character, so i will be at index 0 and j will be at index 12. And so here we copied all the string and as you see it's reversed. What is missing is the terminating character that we'll add after the loop finishes. Now we'll have a look at the C implementation. So we have the original array, which is the same one. We have the destination array declared here. We have the two indices i and j. We have the length variable. We'll use strlen to compute the length of array. The interesting thing of strlen is that it doesn't count the terminating character, so we have to keep that in consideration. We then have the for loop, which is the one that does all these operations. So we start from the last position excluding the terminating character, so length minus 1. It's minus 1 because the indices start from 0 and not from 1. So we have to subtract 1. Then our, ter our terminating condition for the for loop is when i reaches the first character. And the next iteration would be i equals minus 1. Then we have to increment j and decrement i. As I said before, here, we decrement i, increment j, and we copy the characters. If we start from the first one, so i, i, h, h, white space, white space, etc. Finally, we add the terminating character at the end, which is not shown here, but okay. And we print the string normally. If we go back for a moment to the strlen manual here, we notice that strlen does not return an int. Okay, like this one. It's not an, really an int, but it's a size t. A size t is an unsigned integer. So if we open the manual for size t here, we'll see size t used for a count of bytes. It is the result of size of operator. It is an unsigned integer type capable of storing values in the range zero size max. What if we decided to change all the variables to size t, like I did in the other solution. Okay, so here we have the same arrays, we have the same variables, except now they are size t. We still have the strlen function. The for loop is very similar, except the condition here. If we open the solution one, okay. Okay, so here, instead of having e greater or equal than zero, we do the other check because a size t, which is an unsigned integer, can never go to negative numbers. So if we change this condition to the one in the original program, so i greater than zero, okay, like this, and close this for a moment, okay, I compile, and then solution one, improved. Okay, so here we get a segmentation fault. The explanation for this, we can see it if we put things back to normal. 
and then we run the program. So, okay, so here we get the reversed string, the correct solution. So I H G F here, A, B A. Then here I decided to print something interesting. So if you set i equals zero with i being a size t. And then we try to subtract one from zero. Instead of getting minus one, we get this number. This number is defined as size max, which is which is defined in the stdint.h library. And if you remember before, if you do man size t, we get this value here, which is the maximum value possible for size t. So we can't use we can't use the i greater than zero condition here, but we have to use this value because because we get an underflow here. Here we get an underflow. Personally, I use a different solution because I don't trust that these behaviors are all the same in all programming languages. Underflows and overflows behave differently. So we can see another solution, which is called no underflow. We have still the same thing, so same arrays, the same variables. We have a new variable called done. We still have the strln function we still define i equals length minus one. Then we have a loop. Instead of a for loop, we use a while. We still copy the characters in the same way. So reverse of j equals array of i. Then we still have the same behavior here. Then we have this condition here, which is very important because when i equals zero, the loop ter uh, terminates. And so there is no need to control for the underflow and all that stuff. We still need to do the terminating character here. And that's it. Okay, so now I'll show you a second solution, which is this one here. Okay, so we still have the same arrays, array reversed, the same variables as the first solution. Okay, i j length, i j length. That instead of using strln like we did in the first solution, we we'll count the characters manually. Length starts from zero, and we'll get to the terminating character, which is included in the count. And so we'll notice that length, which we counted manually, is equal to strln. This for loop is the same as in the first case. The terminating character is put in the same position. So if we run this program, if we run this program, so make solution two. Okay, so we get length equals 13, strln equals 13 and reverse is the same. We now see a third solution which doesn't involve counting the string. So it's solution three. So we still have the same variables. We have two new variables here, done and go back. Done is a flag and go back is a flag as well. Okay, so let's start with this operation. So this block of code here is the same as this one. So reversed equals array of i. The difference here is that instead of using strln or counting the string manually, we'll iterate character by character since go back equals zero initially here. Okay, we'll go in this block. So we'll go i plus plus until we get to the terminating character when array of i equals terminating character. Go back is set to one. And then all I will go back. We'll go just like we did 
here in the first solution. So starting from on the first step. Back here, here, here. Then the terminating condition is this one. So if we've been to the last character and we've copied all the string, remember what we did here. So this one is the last step. But if we do another iteration, i equals minus one, then done equals one. So when we when the loop goes back here, why not done now is false because not true is false. So the while loop finishes, we get to this instruction because j now is uh, will be here, position thirteen, and that's it. So if we compile this one. Solution three. Okay, so we still get the same result. Okay, so now we'll see a radically different solution that instead of using the arrays like in the first, second, and third solution we did here, instead of using two arrays, it will use just one array. So uh, the array will be written in place. To do this, we need still two variables, i and j. j will still be in the first position, i will be in the last except for the terminating character. They will go in the same direction as before, but instead of copying the characters, we'll swap them. So array of zero becomes array of 12, and array of 12 becomes array of zero. So after the first swap, we've got array of zero is i, and array of 12 is a, so we did something like this. Okay, if we go on with the algorithm, okay, so here we swapped, okay, b is now here, h is now here. Now we have to swap the white spaces, which doesn't change anything really. So after doing all the iterations, we get to this point where we have dropped all the letters, all the characters, so A, I, H, B, etc. We get that J equals five and I equals seven. Our terminating condition is when J equals I, because if we do another step, we get J here, J, okay, J equals six and I equals six. So right after the swap, we have I minus minus and j plus plus, so a equals j equals six, and we must quit the circuit because we have no need to swap the same character here with itself. So now we'll have a look at the code. So this is solution four. We have the original array. We don't need the second array because it's in place. We have the same variables as the previous solution. We have a new variable which will be used as a swap variable. Then we'll, we'll do a, a while loop here, just as we did before. We'll get to the last character, we'll exclude the terminating character from the count. We'll set this flag here, go back. And then we'll do the swaps until i is greater than j, as we did here. So. Here, 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 and here. I is always greater than J. And, uh, you know, the swap operation is this one. Usual swap operation. This condition is similar to the one we saw before, except we now have I less or equal than J. In this case, I will be equal than J here. If we open one second the solution okay here it was i equals minus one because okay as i said before i goes here so now we can run the program and see what happens yeah so i need a new line here Okay, so here is just to show you that i equals j equals 6. 
as we saw here. And that's it really. So if you like this video, put a like, remember to subscribe, and that's it for today. Bye bye.